Hi students, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to share a lesson on uh, chapter 1 of Form 3. This is the beginning of the Form 3 lesson and today's topic will be on stimulus and response and also the human nervous system. The objectives of today's lesson are to understand number one what is stimulus and response so it's very important for you to understand the meaning of stimulus and response number two what is the structure and function of the human nervous system three what is voluntary action and involuntary action four what is the pathway of impulse in the human nervous system that means how does the impulse travel in the human nervous system number five what is the importance of the human nervous system now students imagine this you are sitting quietly in your room following this video and suddenly something happens a tiger runs into your room so what is your reaction are you going to sit there and do nothing? Probably not, right? Probably you are going to have a reaction, something like this. Probably you will shout or you will run away. So here you will see that the tiger coming into your room is called a stimulus. A stimulus is something that happens that makes you do something. So the something that you do is like this. You have a response, which means you make a, an action. So shouting or maybe running away from the tiger is a response. So you have a stimulus and you have a response. So looking at the situation just now, let's define what stimulus and response are. For definition, a stimulus is a change or an event that causes a reaction to happen or something to happen. So a stimulus is something that happens that makes another thing happen. What is response? Response is an action that takes place because of the stimulus. So here you can see very clearly that you must have a stimulus before you can have a response. Therefore, we say that stimulus causes a response. So you have a stimulus and then you will have a response. Okay, students, now what causes us to have this response? What is the system in our body which produces this response? So actually, in our human body, we have what we call the human nervous system. So this is an important system in our body because without this, we will not be able to produce a correct response to whatever that happens around us. So what, uh, what are the parts of the human nervous system? First of all, there are two parts. To this human nervous system or we call two components of the human nervous system the first one is called the central nervous system okay now the central nervous system consists of two parts of the body first one is the brain and the second part here is the spinal cord so the brain and the spinal cord makes up the central nervous system as for the second component of the human nervous system it is called the periphery, peripheral nervous system. So this system composed, is composed of two parts. First of all, you have the cranial nerves. Do you see all these blue nerves or we call blue uh, cells? Actually, they are called nerve cells which run from the brain or connects from the brain to the organs in the face. So these are called the cranial nerves. We have actually 12 pairs of cranial nerves why do we call 12 pairs? Because we have 12 on the left hand side and 12 on the right hand side because we have both sides of the face. Okay, now the, the other component of the peripheral nervous system is the spinal nerve. The spinal nerve runs from the spinal cord to all the other parts of the body. So you will see that these nerves connect all the other parts of the body to the spinal cord. Okay, so there you have it. Let's recap. You have human nervous system com is composed of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. For the central nervous system, it has the brain and the spinal cord. Whereas 
for the peripheral nervous system, it has the cranial nerve and the spinal nerve. Okay, students, actually there are two types of actions. So what are the two types of actions that our bodies can perform? First of all, there is voluntary action and the other one is called involuntary action. Okay, now what are the differences between, or what is the definition of these two types of actions? Firstly, voluntary action, they are conscious actions performed at will and controlled by the brain. Okay, what does it mean by conscious actions? These are actions that we are aware of. That means we know that it's happening at the time. Okay, performed at will means we can choose whether we want to do it or we do not want to do it. And even when we do it, it's actually controlled by the brain. So, for example, let's look at some examples of voluntary action. For example, it's talking, all right? You can control what you want to say. You also can control your hand movement when you're writing. So writing, walking, all right, running. These are all things that you can control. And you also can choose whether you want to do it or you do not want to do it. For example, you pick up something from the floor, pick up, picking up a coin from the floor. Okay, so you can choose to do it or not to do it and you also can choose to do it whether to do it fast or to do it slow. Okay, next, what is involuntary action? These are actions performed without conscious control or will. You are not even uh, aware sometimes that it happens, right? You, you do not have to think about it. Without conscious control means you don't even have to think about it and you cannot even control it or stop it if you wanted to. Example would be, Okay, let me give you a few examples. Would be your heart beating. Okay, your heartbeat is actually happening inside your body 24 hours a day. Even when you're sleeping, you do not even have to think about it. It happens automatically. Same thing for breathing. Okay, breathing also, you cannot even stop it if you want to. And it happens automatically. Another one would be your hand withdrawing or when you touch something hot, your hand pulling it, pulling, uh, pull backwards, right, to withdraw your hand. It is to actually protect yourself because you do not want your cells to be burned. So this is also performed without conscious control and you can't even stop it even if you want to. Okay, so these are called involuntary actions. All right, students. Now, what are the characteristics of voluntary action and involuntary action? In characteristics means in Hawaii or you call it Mandarin, it's called Tetzen. Okay, or in BM, we call Chiri Chiri, ataupun Sifat Sifat. So voluntary action and involuntary action, here are the characteristics. Okay, for voluntary action, as I mentioned earlier, they occur consciously, that means we know that it's happening, and it is conducted under one's will. That means it's conducted under whether you want, whether you want to do it or you do not want to do it. So you can control it. For involuntary action, they happen without conscious control. You do not need to control it. You also cannot control if you want to. And you do not need to think about it or it happens without thought. Okay, next. Voluntary action is controlled by the brain. So your brain is the center to control to, for the actions that you do, whether you want to do it or not to do it. It is under your, the control of the brain. For involuntary action, it is actually controlled by the spinal cord and medulla oblongata. So you will see here that there are actually two centers for involuntary action. Now, why is there two centers or two, two places? This is because involuntary action itself, there are two types. Okay, afterwards we will see these two types of involuntary action. Right, now students. Okay, now this is the picture of the brain and the uh, relevant parts okay so for let's label let's start to label this big part of the brain here has a specific name this is called cerebrum all right okay let's look at the name cerebrum and then there is another part of the brain which is actually smaller we call it the lower brain lower brain means it's at the bottom okay at the bottom of cerebrum this is called cerebellum Okay, so you see the difference here. There's a double L. So a lot of students will ask me, teacher, I do not know how to remember which is cerebrum and cerebellum. Okay, sometimes they get confused. So I tell, always tell them there's one easy way to remember. And that is, you look at this word cerebellum, it has a double L. So there's an L in the word. So L 
you try to imagine the L stands for lower brain. Lower L is for lower. So this one, cerebellum automatically will remind you that it is the smaller brain here or the lower brain at the bottom. Okay, so cerebrum and cerebellum are parts of the brain. So actually brains is not just one part. There are at least three parts to the brain here. So here you see cerebrum and cerebellum. Now another part that you should know of the brain is called medulla oblongata. Okay, so the spelling is double L, right? Medulla oblongata. This is another part of the brain. Now where is this medulla oblongata? It is actually here at the base of the brain. Okay, that means you will see that it's very near the cerebellum and it's below the cerebrum. Okay, so this part is a little bit bulging. That means it's a bit like, you know, bigger in size compared to the rest of the bottom part here. Now, the bottom part here is actually the spinal cord, which runs right down to your the, the base of your spine, okay, at the bottom. So, it, this these four parts is actually, uh, or rather, cerebrum, cerebellum, and medulla oblongata, these are actually parts of the brain. And the spinal cord is the one that con connects to all the rest of your body, okay? So, we have seen that this is actually the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord. All right, students, just now I did mention there are actually two types of involuntary action. So let's look at oh, why are there two types of involuntary action. Okay, the reason is because there are actually two centers which control these, type, these two types of involuntary action. So the first type, the first group is actually those which involve medulla oblongata. So there are certain part, there are certain involuntary actions which are controlled by the medulla oblongata. Okay, we have seen earlier it is actually at the base of the brain. And the other type of involuntary action, this is a special type of involuntary action. So we give it a special name, it's called reflex action. Okay, it involves the spinal cord. Okay, so you will see here that there are two types of involuntary action. One is involving medulla oblongata, while the other one involves the spinal cord. And this we give a special name called reflex action. Okay, let's look at the similarities first between these two types of involuntary action. Okay, first of all, all right, these two types are automatic. Automatic means that you do not need to think about it, you do not need to uh, do it consciously. It will happen by itself. That is called automatic. Okay, the meaning of automatic is actually happening by itself. All right, okay, now the second point here is it is innate. Okay, now look at this word. Probably you have not seen this word before. Now, innate means learn. Now, why does it not need to be learned? This is because you are born with it. Okay, the this type of actions that are controlled by the medulla oblongata, they, these are the actions which you do not need to learn and you are born with it. That means when you are a baby, you already have these types of action. Okay, afterwards, I will show you what the actions are. Okay, for the other one, it's also the same. Reflex action, it, they are also innate. That means you are, or, or even babies are born with it. Everyone is born with it and they do not need to be learned. Okay, now let's look at the differences. Okay, the differences between the involuntary action by uh, involving medulla oblongata and also the actions, involuntary action involving spinal cord. Okay, first of all, let's look at the, same, uh, the differences. For the action involving medulla oblongata, these are usually actions which function to maintain internal processes that keep us alive. That means things that are happening, processes that are happening inside our body that make us uh, keep us alive. For example, your heart beating, all right, and your um, breathing. So these are important processes and they are controlled by the medulla oblongata. Okay, now for the other one, the reflex action, this involves the spinal cord. So these are the actions which are mostly function to protect our body from injury. Okay, so it protects our body from injury. So it is very important as well, but it's not the uh, action that happens 24 hours a day. Okay, for the 
action involving medulla oblongata these are the actions or the the processes which happen 24 hours a day like heart beating and also breathing and also there's another one called peristalsis where your the muscles in your large intestine and small intestines will contract and relax okay after this, i'll show you a picture of that okay what is another differences between these two okay next is slow so the actions involving medulla oblongata they are slow because they happen slowly and it happens continuously in fact 24 hours a day whereas for those involving your spinal cord or we call it reflex action they are fast and they are immediate they also happen only one time an example will be like when you touch something hot okay you accidentally touch something hot with your hand so automatically your hand will be pulled backwards right your hand will be pulled backwards because you do not want your the cells on your fingers to be burned by the hot iron or for the or the hot kettle or the fire so this one is to protect your body from injury and it only happens only one time so it's immediately you only pull one time not pull 24 hours a day right okay now the third uh, differences okay for involuntary action involving medulla oblongata like the internal processes they occur without external stimulus that means the, it does not have anything it does not need anything to start your heartbeat you do not need anything to start your breathing so you know how to do it automatically you do not need a stimulus to make it happen good okay but for the reflex action you will need something to make your hand pull back now why does your hand pull back it is because you touch something hot so touching something hot this is the external stimulus so for reflex action you need to have a stimulus before the action can take place okay so these are the three differences between the involuntary action involving medulla oblongata and the involuntary action involving the spinal cord this is known as reflex action okay students now let's look at some examples of involuntary actions which involve these two groups or these two parts which is medulla oblongata and uh, the spinal cord these are called reflex action so let's look at the eight types of processes or, or actions that we have here now for the first you have what we call the action of the muscles in your small intestine okay we call it ta chang and xiao chang right in your body these are the in the in bm we call usus so these are the ones that the, the muscles here will contract and relax rhythmic rhythmically okay to push the food along or to push whatever contents inside your body to move it down okay so this is called peristalsis okay the second one here shows the lungs here what i want to show you is actually breathing okay and here the third one you see the hand automatically letting go of the pan because the pan is too hot so your hand will will let go or will withdraw your hand because you touch something that is hot okay number four look at the example here this is uh, you know Bart Simpson all right this is a famous cartoon character you see what is he have what is he showing here he is uh, salivating salivating means uh, producing saliva okay or secretion of saliva okay the next one the heart here shows actually is heart beating all right and look at the eye here this is pupil pupil is a small opening in uh, in front of the eye here to allow the sunlight or uh, light to go into the eye so here you will see from the small pupil it turns into a bigger one okay so the pupil will dilate or become bigger so this is actually also a response an involuntary response because when you enter a dark room there is not enough light so you will need to have more light enter your eye so automatically your eye uh, this pupil will dilate or become bigger okay next you will see this person uh, coughing or sneezing okay it could be like coughing it could be sneezing so maybe something has entered his nose so it's itchy or maybe something has entered his throat so he wants to cough it out okay so this is another action and lastly look at this this person touching a hot object or a hot kettle uh, accidentally so what is the action okay so what you can do is you can pause the video right now all right and then try to do the answer uh, try to draw lines to show which 
are the, of the eight types, which are those actions which involve medulla oblongata and which are the ones which involve the reflex action. Okay, now go ahead, just pause the video and try it now. Okay, I hope you have done it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the answer. For peristalsis, it involves the medulla oblongata because this happens 24 hours a day. Okay, same for breathing, also happens uh, unconsciously and also it happens 24 hours a day. All of these, in fact, are involuntary. Okay, next, salivation or producing saliva or secretion of saliva. This also happens uh, slow, all right, and it happens the whole time, so it's involving medulla oblongata. Okay, next, for this one, the releasing the grip on the pen or letting go of the pen. This is actually action that is quite fast and it is happening only one time only. So it's actually a reflex action. Next, the heart beating. All right, this is definitely involving medulla oblongata because it helps to keep us alive and it is uh, happening 24 hours a day. Next, your eyeball, oh no, sorry, not eyeball, your pupils dilating is actually a one time only. This is an immediate response when there's not enough sunlight. When you enter into a dark room, automatically your pupils will become bigger, or we say dilate. Next, sneezing or coughing. All right, this is also a reflex action because it's more of a protection. You want to uh, push out the thing that has entered your nose or you want to push out the thing that has entered your throat. And lastly, touching something hot and pulling back your hand, this is also a reflex action. All right, so now, so the first one here is peristalsis. Second here is heartbeat. Okay, I've put it all to the left-hand side. All these are involving medulla oblongata. Okay, next example, breathing salivation or secretion of saliva so this happens continuously all right and for the reflex action the examples are over here withdrawing the hand when touching or touches hot object when the hand touches hot object or next one releasing the grip that means letting it go uh, on a hot object letting a uh, releasing grip on a hot object next coughing or sneezing when maybe dust enters the nose or dust enters the throat okay so next one pupils a uh, pupil is not students uh, so at this word pupil has got two meanings one is of course students or we say murid the next one pupil is this opening here in front of the eye all right in your eyeball here this is called pupil so we will learn more of this in the next section when we learn about the eye so the pupils dilating when enter when you enter a dark room this is actually a reflex action Okay, students, now let's look at how this action takes place. Okay, how do we uh, produce the response to a stimulus? So, for example, let's look here. The phone suddenly rings. Okay, so the phone ringing is called a stimulus because it makes you do something. So, the phone ringing is actually the stimulus. Okay, now the stimulus here, now what, what hears the stimulus? How do you know it's a stimulus? What detects or can, uh, what we call, mengesan? Or feel there is the phone ringing which part of your body does that so actually it's your ear right your ear is the part that uh, are able to listen to sound so it's able to de to detect the stimulus so your ear is considered an a factor or receptor so there are special cells these are special cells inside your ear which pick up the sound okay and also these special cells called a factor or receptor will produce a kind of message we call it an um, impulse impulse is actually electricity electrical uh electrical impulse that actually go into the cells and pass it to the brain okay so first of all you have stimulus happening first which is the phone ringing and then your ear your human ear will actually able to pick up the sound and your cells inside there called the a factor or receptor will produce the special message called the electricity and this is called nerve impulse. This is going to be sent to the brain. Okay. Now in the brain, this is like the central processing unit. This is like the CPU of your computer. Okay. So your brain receives the message and the brain now knows, okay, oh, the, my phone is ringing. So what should I do? Okay. Maybe you want to pick up the phone. 
or maybe you do not want to pick up the phone maybe you want to ignore it so whatever it is your brain has to send out messages okay so it's going to send a message this is called nerve impulse send to your hand the muscles in your hand maybe you want to pick it up so if you want to pick it up your muscle must know how to contract okay contract just so you're so short okay so it will it will uh, it will contract so that it, you can move your your bones in your hand to pick up pick up the pick up the the phone all right so your effector is actually the muscle all right the muscle is a factor and lastly when your muscles uh, contract all right your hand will move and then you will pick up the phone and you will answer the phone so that is response answering the phone or touching the screen this is the response okay so what i want you to remember here is the pathway this is called the pathway or we call the lu xian okay from the beginning until the ending always start with the stimulus and you will always end with the response but in between what happens okay which are the parts what are the parts that are involved so stimulus after stimulus, you have a factor. A factor will pick up the stimulus, okay? Because it's the ear that able to hear. So pick up the stimulus, then sends to the center called the brain, where it's going to process the information. After that, it's going to send message out to the muscle to tell the muscle to contract, so to pull your hand so that you can pick up the phone. So lastly, picking up the phone is the response. So you need to remember stimulus, a factor or receptor then brain, then effector, and response. So this numbering all must be correct, okay? And this is example of voluntary control because you can choose whether you want to answer the phone or you don't want to answer the phone, okay? Okay, now students, let's look at another example. This is an involuntary action with a specific one, the special one which we call reflex action that is more of protecting your body, okay, from injury. So let's say, now hot object, okay, now hot object here is the stimulus because this is the thing that makes everything happen. Why your hand will pull back? Because you have this thing. So the hot object is actually the stimulus, okay, this is number one. And number two is the special cells in your fingers. Okay, these special cells are called A factor or receptor. So these cells are able to pick up, pick up the, the, the stimulus, which says, okay, the stimulus is hot. All right, so these uh, A factors or receptor are able to sense or able to detect that this thing is hot. Okay, so number two here is the A factor or receptor. And this a factor or receptor is going to produce the message or produce the impulse. Impulse is electrical signal, electricity, okay? And it's going to be sent all the way to the control center. So you see, this is all called nerve cell, okay? Shenjing xian. So this Shenjing xian, or we call nerve cells, some of them can be quite long, okay? It could be more than a meter long. So this one connects all the way into your brain, oh, sorry, not into your brain, into your spinal cord, because this is special type of protection, uh, this special type of action does not need for you to think. You do not need to think, oh, this is very hot, so I must pull out my hand. No need, because it goes into your spinal cord, and your spinal cord is the processing center, and this one will send message out to tell your hand to pull back, okay? So number three is spinal cord, and spinal cord will send the message out to another nerve cell to the effector. So effector here is your hand muscle, the muscles in your hand, which will, once you receive the message, it will contract. So when it contracts, it actually pulls your hand, your hand will move, and this is your response. So your response is your hand pulling back. Okay, so this is an example of the reflex action where we see the pathway. The pathway is the lu xian. Okay, lu xian means the jalan, all right, from the uh, stimulus until it comes, until you get the response. Right, students, so what is the importance of the human nervous system? Okay, so generally speaking, the importance of the ner human nervous system is that it controls and coordinates the organs and parts of the body. So generally, this will be the answer that you can give, okay? Because the human nervous system is the control center. It controls and also coordinates all the other organs and the parts of the body so that we can function well. 
So let's look at this flow chart again. Okay, all this um, we call the pathway of impulse. So it always starts with the stimulus. Okay, whatever happens to us, the external stimulus. So and this stimulus will be picked up by the receptor. So in this case, is the finger. We have special cells in the in the fingers. Whenever we touch, we can feel whether it's hot or cold or even it's painful. So this will send message through the nerve cell the control center all right this is century neuron but you do not need to know all these words you just need to know it's nerve cell which connected into the control center so what happened the control center is spinal cord because this is a reflex action so the spinal cord is the control center or we call this the con central nervous system and then when after that it processes information and it's going to give you a response okay and this response or this impulse will be sent out of the spinal cord through the nerve cell again right all these are nerve cells all connecting these are all nerve cells it goes to the effector okay and in this case you have muscles in your hand so your effector uh, is going to uh, contract your muscles going to contract and it's going to pull your hand back so pulling your hand back is your response okay so I want you to remember the stimulus then followed by a receptor followed by the spinal cord or the brain depending on what uh, what kind of what kind of uh, action it is and also after that you will have effector and lastly the response so this pathway must always be in this order all right okay lastly let's look at what is the effect of uh, if the human nervous system is damaged or does not function okay now this happens sometimes all right if you have a person has had accident so the human nervous system may be damaged all right now what can happen what's the effect okay the effect is uh, coordination and control of the body does not occur okay of course this naturally it is logical because the human nervous system the job or the function is to coordinate and to control the body so if you do not have the human nervous system therefore you cannot control and you also cannot coordinate the parts of your body you cannot have the correct response okay secondly you may also have uh, the case where the person is unable to move parts of his body so he cannot move his part of his body in order to uh, produce the response for example if something uh, pokes the person the person can feel the pain but maybe because some of the nerve cells are damaged okay or he may not be even be able to feel it and he also cannot move his body to move away from the the, the danger or the stimulus and another is uh, okay lastly okay you may find that the person may even be paralyzed so paralyzed means okay uh, the person cannot walk okay the person cannot control parts of his body and he cannot move so you will see maybe the person will be confined to a wheelchair so the person will be sitting in a wheelchair okay for the rest of his life so usually this human the nervous system or the cells here they do not recover so we do not produce new cells in order to um, replace old and damaged nerve uh, nerve cells okay so students please do look after your nervous system it is precious and there is no replacement okay students lastly i want you to try to do this exercise now this is um, a mistake which i always find from students they always use the terms wrongly so they do not know what to how to use the uh, what is the job of these parts for example the central nervous system and then the nerve cell receptor or effector and also the effector okay so they always confused they are always confused with using these terms and they use it wrongly so let's look at all these words now what detects stimuli so which part of the body detects stimuli okay secondly number two which part generates impulse generates means makes or produces so which part will produce the electricity okay in order for the message to be passed on to to pass the message okay number three which part of this these answers here we uh, sense impulse that means sense the electricity or sense the message to the brain or to the spinal cord number four which part receives impulse which part will get the impulse or get the message okay in the control center or in the the central uh, nervous system next number five 
which part actually interprets the impulse which part will actually uh, get the message and also will give meaning interpret means give meaning what does this message mean okay so, okay let's say for example the person receives the message all right then the person will try to think okay what does this message means okay so what part of it will actually get the message and think uh, or control or process it to know the meaning behind it and lastly which part produces the response okay so you can pause the video just now all right and try to you get your answers and i will show you the answers in the next slide okay students so here are the answers so right receptor or a factor actually detects the stimuli so these these are the cells that can let's say detect whether the thing is hot or whether it's cold or whether it's noisy or whether you see a certain danger all right so these are the cells that actually detect stimuli all right remember so you do not say e factor detect stimuli it's actually the a uh, receptor or a factor okay second question here what part generates the impulse which part will actually make the electricity to be sent into the brain so it's actually also the receptor or a factor that generates or produces the impulse or produces the message so the message starts from the receptor okay number three which part actually sends or carries the impulse carries the impulse to the brain to be processed so these are the nerve cells which i mentioned to you some of them can be quite long it can be a bit more than one meter okay next which part receives the impulse it is the central nervous system meaning it can be the brain or it can be the spinal cord because brain and spinal cord will uh, make up your central nervous system okay so they receive the impulse and they also interpret the impulse that means once it receives the impulse it's going to do some calculation all right what is it what is the meaning so what should i do now okay so that is the central nervous system consisting of the brain and the spinal cord and lastly which part is going to produce the response which part is going to um, contract okay to pull the bone so it's actually the effector an example is actually the muscle or the glands so glands are certain part cells in your body which actually produces some secretion or liquids like hormone okay so these are the answers i hope that you'll jot them down all right students i have prepared a quizzes for you so don't forget to join my quizzes just put your cursor here press control and click on the link it will bring you directly to the quizzes have fun okay students so that's it for today's lesson i have covered what i wanted to let you know which is stimulus and response plus the, the human nervous system so thanks for watching and i hope you will like and also share the link of this video to your friends and also help to subscribe to my channel so that i will be able to be motivated to make even more videos for you to educate more people so you can uh, share this to your friends all right i hope to see you in my next video so bye for now